Tough times are here, and undoubtedly, it's really bad, and likely it's only going to get worse in the months ahead. Goodness gracious. The thing is, and I've told you guys this before, many people are going to keep blaming the pandemic. But in reality, it shows the real reason why it's going down is because our economy was so fragile based on this low lending requirement, low interest rate, fractional reserve, banking credit system. And believe it or not, it's looking really, really scary out there. There's a lot of fear. And not to mention, there is just an epidemic of mass job losses. And a lot of people argue that Las Vegas is the hardest hit, or at least in the top five metro areas when it comes to massive joblessness. And this is obviously gonna have a significant impact on housing. I wouldn't be surprised if crime rates start to change the way our society is, population levels are gonna come down. So there's a lot of different things you're going to have to keep in mind. And the bottom line is, look, you know, I don't really think that a lot of these people all over the world that have been hit hard by this horrible economy, they're going to want to come here and obviously overspend in these resorts and not to mention get a lot of negative service because when you think about it, it's not as great as it used to be, a lot of people argue. So this is what it really, really shows. We're very dependent on hospitality. Our economy is not very diversified enough. And what is this gonna really, really come out to? Well, first of all, I think it's very likely that governments are gonna increase taxes, which I think there's gonna be a lot of opposition, but we'll have to see how that turns out. We have to understand it could have a big impact on voting outcomes. Because certainly a lot of this job loss is going to affect the unions and their membership is going to decline. And we're going to see it's going to have different outcomes in future elections. But once again, a lot of people keep saying, well, Las Vegas is going to be a ghost town. We're going to be the next Detroit. And a lot of these arguments seem very reasonable. However, keep in mind, though, Reno saw their tourism sector decline a lot over the years and they have not collapsed. As a matter of fact, their home prices are higher than it is here in Las Vegas. So what happened? Well, Reno really became an affordable housing destination for people wanting to escape the Bay Area. And I think this is what's going to happen here in Las Vegas if the tourism industry collapses. I think a lot of people from California are just going to continue to pop it up. However, keep in mind, if California has so many problems and their population sinks down, then certainly Nevada will begin to have some impact as well. So look at this article from the Wall Street Journal. A lot of media sources are telling you that this is looking really bad. In Las Vegas, coronavirus job losses could double those in the 2007-09 recession. Hector Padilla lost his job basically in the 2007-2009 recession and it could be happening all over again. A 50-year-old former construction worker, Mr. Padilla, helped build the Bellagio, Mandalay Bay, and Venetian casinos, which have become a ghost town. He was laid off from March 16th as a building engineer in the Sahara Casino. So it comes happen over and over again. It's just this boom and bust cycle economy. And yet, I guess these people should prepare. They should learn their lessons, but in reality, they're not. Now, many gaming businesses are going to be like, oh, we deserve federal aid. So you're here to tell me that you made all these lousy decisions. You lobbied the government, brought massive campaign donors to people like Sisolak to shut down these businesses. And now with these failed decisions, we need federal aid. You know, this really sounds like they wanted to fail and they wanted to get some kind of bailout or get bought out by the Chinese. I'm not exactly sure but this is really seems to be like some kind of controlled demolition. When you think about it, don't give them federal aid, help the American people, not large corporations. And this is one of the reasons why I have concerns about our current president. So they have been making good decisions, raising their prices, being very reckless. And why in the world should we bail them out? Give me a break. 
You can look at this article from the Reno Gazette Journal. Reno among the hardest states hit by the job losses. You can see here it's about 20%. Nevada is very, very high. Now this one is not saying we're among the highest hit, but a lot of evidence shows that obviously we are among the hardest hit. So it tells us we're about 19%. And you can see here about 300,000 people. Unbelievable. Wow. It is just really, really shocking. And you can see your jobless claims is the highest level we've seen in 2009. And we ain't seen nothing yet. We have to see if they open that. The question is, will they be hiring as many workers as they used to? I doubt it because we're seeing a lot of hotels that are permanently laying people off. And this will have obviously a domino effect in the rest of the economy. I'm not sure exactly how high it will get. Now, let's go on with all these other articles. In Las Vegas, the odds are not our favor. From Stratosphere to Mandalay Bay, Vegas is closed for business. Las Vegas is deserted. An emptiness is a haunted version of what they call home, vacant subways. And we suffer and we will experience it longer than the most. In New Year's Eve 2020, I worked in many of my last shifts in the casino at a cocktail server. I sneaked out the service well with my coworkers and the fireworks along with a crowd of thousands of tourists all over the world. Thinking about leaving an industry I spent a decade in was bittersweet. I will always be here and I want to come back. Just a few months later, wow, the casino is empty and I'm out of work. Nevada closed all the non-essential businesses and spread of the outbreak. But here in Las Vegas, our economy is largely non-essential. And it's a very fragile, I've used that term many times, three and a half million tourists visited here last month, a year ago. Now you got 206,000 casino workers that have been affected. And then you have about 100,000 that are indirectly affected as well of all the other businesses that are connected to it. I believe cab drivers and our unemployment rate will be about 20% this summer. It mirrors the 2008 financial crisis. And again, we're talking about mainly casinos. Wait until you see the effects to construction sector, because the last time it was really a construction sector. But when people stop buying these homes, many of the homes I've criticized over the years, that number is likely to grow over time. Now you can see our wind resorts is going to pay their 25,000 employees. But nevertheless, when there's not going to be enough visitors, we'll see if they can keep their promise. MGM, the more shady company that I've talked about many, many times, says that they can only guarantee that their furloughed employees will get two weeks of pay. And then basically they'll have to go on unemployment. Now, believe it or not, I'm very, very concerned that we could lose hundreds of thousands of people living here in Las Vegas. This is going to be very, very shocking. I'm also concerned about all these gig workers, too, about Uber and Lyft drivers. So they're telling you about the $1,200 a check. It's not stretching far. Again, it could obviously pay the rent for the vast majority of the apartments here, but not enough, ladies and gentlemen. We can get through this, but for the workers, it's not as generous. This is an article from the local news media, 8 News Now. Las Vegas, the hardest hit during the COVID-19 shutdown. You can see here, unlike the article, from the Reno Gazette, we are the, literally the darkest color. Las Vegas is among the highest. Wow, unbelievable. This is looking really, really bad. About 294,000 leisure and hospitality workers, about 39% of the jobs. So again, the hospitality and leisure is about 30%, but the, all the other businesses, it takes it up to about 40%. Nevada's economy among the most vulnerable from the Review Journal, skyrocketing unemployment. You can see here 92,000, 71,000, about 80,000 right here. We're among the highest risk. We're in the dark red. Things are looking really, really bad. Unbelievable. And you can see here a lot of these food lines and everything. So, wow. And all these other sectors had high impacts from this huge, huge downturn. Unbelievable. 
Now, here's an article I forgot to talk about before. And you can see right here why the U.S. commercial real estate bubble is going to burst. Once again, you can see here commercial property prices has gone up a lot. It's making it very, very harder for people to do business because the prices go up, I believe. And not to mention, we got all these rising vacancies primarily in retailers. Commercial real estate loans have surged $863 billion. A lot of people argue it should have burst last time, but unfortunately, it did not. Station Casinos is laying off a significant number of workers. And there's a lot of other articles that present that obviously the Palms and I believe the Fiesta Henderson Rancho, they're going to be permanently laying them off. In other words, they won't be opening anytime soon. It'll probably take several weeks and months for that to happen. And they actually sent a big, big note about exactly what's going on. And they're going to pay their workers until May 15th and give their health benefits a little longer than that. But then again, my goodness, it's going to be really, really interesting what will happen to all these workers and where they will go. I believe a lot of them, which are foreign born, they're going to probably be moving out of the state or probably moving back to their countries of origin. So how Las Vegas became the ground zero for the American jobs crisis. Unbelievable. This is really, really sad. When Anderson starts to count, many people have lost their jobs. She runs out of fingers fast. Her husband, breadwinner, and a restaurant worker at Rio Casino workers, all 25 of his co-workers in a temp agency, a technician who does her nails, the barber who cuts her husband's hair, her best friend's waitress, all three servers and managers at TGI Fridays in his family's favorite treat. It's just a rickle down effect. Un. Believable. You're pushing people against the corner. At the bottom line, the American economy fell out and few places were hit harder than Las Vegas where one third of local economy is in the leisure and hospitality industry more than any other metropolitan area. Nearly 350,000 people in Nevada has fallen for unemployment. This is coming from Applied Analysis. I've actually met the guy who runs it, Jeremy Aguero. And Marilyn Carolyn Goodman, we'll talk about her later on. She said she should ready to open, considering the fact that a tiny minority of the people who die are under the age of 40. Before the economy, Nevada was the fastest growing in the country, one of the top 10, I believe. The strip shut down. A lot of people got laid off. It's like you're in a horror movie and it's just really, really hard to believe. A lot, a lot of people have been putting claims in the unemployment office. Many people argue the office is not working very, very good. So you can see a lot of people lining up as far as four o'clock in the morning, more than six hours before it opens. Thank goodness I've got a good amount of food in my refrigerator and I've got money to go and eat out. A police officer who assists with food giveaways. Some people wait so long in their cars that their batteries die and they give jump starts so they won't lose their place in line. Most Americans support stay at home restrictions. It's a pretty, pretty hard thing to say whether I support it or not. About 52% of low income Americans say it's someone in their household have experienced a job upheaval. So they're being hit hard by these tipped wages, these hourly pay workers. This is something very, very important that you obviously have to keep in mind. Las Vegas, where the majority of the people work in these hospitality industries have been hit very, very hard. You can see here, they've been hit hard by many of these restaurants. Go down the list. She switched to part-time after the birth of her daughter. and they have to take care of their children. Wow, this is really unbelievable. Nevada offers 26 of unemployment, pays a maximum of 469 a week. A lot of people argue that it pays so generously that it encourages people not to find a job. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. They got about more than 28,000 calls and Governor Sizzlik has not done a lot to fix the problem. So this is one of the reasons why there's a lot of frustration with Sizzlack. And it seems like a lot of people say that he actually wanted this downturn to happen along with Jim Murin. 
So he focused more on times COVID, but what about the people who don't have money and medicine? Unbelievable. Just looking down the article, it's just really, really, really depressing. Look at this, a normal economy is not coming back. Again, this was really the self-destruct of this phony, manipulative, largely artificial economy. Some people say 30% by summer. I would say probably 40% here in Las Vegas, if that's gonna really, really happen. And this is largely, once again, a service sector economy. Keep this in mind. So, and a lot of them will be facing permanent job losses. This is really, 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 really shocking. Now look at this, the shock is not confined to the United States. Many European economies cushion the effects of downturn by subsidizing short-term working. This will moderate the surge of unemployment. This probably explains why Germany probably wasn't so badly affected in the last economic downturn. That's a pretty, pretty good point. A lot of migrant workers were furloughed in China. So we've seen similar things like this happen all over the world. Goodness gracious, what do you guys really think? See, I think because America will be different. And again, unlike the last time, we won't have the kind of juice to prop it up. And we just don't have the confidence like we used to. This is from the Nevada Independent. Nearly 80,000 new unemployment claims came in pushing it to 240,000 like we've talked about in the last or so article. Steve Sizzlack is a donor to this agency, as you know. <laughs> Budget hole as much as $30 million for Reno, $100 million for Las Vegas. Wow. I smell tax increases. Now look at this right here. MGM could turn furloughs into layoffs by August 31st because they're starting to realize, well, guess what? You know, the economy is not going to come back. People are not going to have the confidence and people don't want to be part of this surveillance, this whole cleanliness, overreacting, whatever you want to call it. People just don't feel comfortable. It's just too much pushy and pickiness. And well, they're not going to need a lot of workers. There's not going to be a lot of economic activity and not a lot of tax revenue floating in. Of course, they're going to extend health benefits, but... Then again, what are these people going to do if they don't have health insurance and they have to rely on medication and so forth? You can see here, mutant and vacant, Las Vegas struggles to survive, shut down, slot machines are powered down, casinos are barricaded, sidewalks are largely deserted. There's still everywhere you go, not much activity. They're struggling to survive. Everything seems like it is the end of the world. They're going to lose $7.7 billion in wages. Unbelievable. And a lot of people are frustrated. They're fighting back. They believe that this is a massive overreaction. They're struggling to hand on. You can see this guy, Victor Chicas, this guy, I believe he's from Guatemala. And he can now afford to pay his mortgages. I believe he worked in the Mandalay Bay Casino's restaurant service. So I do believe we're going to see a lot, a lot of people leave, not just to other states, but of course, into other countries, believe it or not. So we really, really have to see how this plays out. It looks really, really empty. Very, very frightening. Look at the houses a lot of people live in here in Las Vegas, especially a lot of these people in so-called immigrant culture south of the border. It's, these homes are really beat up. Hopefully when the economy recovers, we can really do something about all this distress. Look, I mean, won't these people wake up and do something about it for heaven's sakes? This is one of the reasons why people have a problem with mass numbers of population change looking very, very deserted, like a ghost town. And you know what? It might as well stay that way for several months and possibly years to come. So <laughs> what do you guys think, ladies and gentlemen? It's looking pretty, pretty frightening. 
All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned for more updates to come. See you guys. The entire Vegas Strip shut down. 100% of casino doors closed. Tourists gone. Everything is like a ghost town and it's like really sad. It's why Alicia Garcia and so many other laid off casino workers are in this line. Miles of cars, hundreds of families wait outside the Boulder Station Casino. They're not here for work, but for free food from the food bank. I never see myself to do this before. I never see myself to do this before, but what can you do? A cancer survivor, Marcella Merriweather had a great union job at the MGM Casino just weeks ago. I said before that I'm not gonna go over there because maybe there's somebody else that somebody needs that. And then now I have to do it. I haven't got any unemployment. Guess what? The face of hunger in Las Vegas today looks like you and me. Over half the folks have never been in a line like this asking for help. These are regular people who are working solid middle class jobs and their lives just capsized overnight. Are you saying this is ground zero for the economic damage? I'm not saying that. I know that this is ground zero. The lights have essentially shut off on Nevada's economy, one based on tourism and leisure. No tourists, no entertainment, making coronavirus a bigger blow to Vegas than the 2008 financial crisis. We're talking that this is worse because at that time, at least we had some occupancy within the hotels. The chairwoman of the Clark County Commission, which governs and strips, says I don't trust now her. How casinos reopen? I'd rather open slow and methodical. I don't think that anybody wants to close a second time. Casinos have begun rolling out reopen plans. The Venetian and Wynn Casino say guests will see new cleaning measures like horrible service. Cameras electrostatic sprayers using hospital-grade disinfectant, and UV lights for disinfection. Luxury driver Jimmy Pryor expects People want to come and... new normal, <laughs> the economy will at best crawl back. He drove up to the food bank in his Hummer. It's what he used to drive Vegas visitors around. COVID changed life like a switch. It's scary, you know, that you, it makes you realize, you know, what you used to have and now you don't have it, right? 